all over our body keeps the body alive if the pranavayu stops even for a second that portion will die so pranavayu keeps our body alive so when we uh, regulate the pranas properly then it helps to maintain the health of our body also so this is a very beautiful sadhana which uh, bhagwan says you can follow now some more sadhanas apare niyata hara ha प्राणान प्राणेशु जुव्वते सर्वे पेते यत्न विदह यत्न क्षपित कल्मशाह अपरे नियता हाराह प्राणान प्राणेशु जुव्वते सर्वे पेते यत्न विदह यत्न क्षपित कल्मशाह हाँ अपरे सम अदर्स अदर सीकर्स सी देर आर सर्टन साधनास विच आर कंडीस्यू टू सर्टन पर्सनैलिटी सो दे एक्सेप्ट दैट साधना ऑल्सो देर आर सर्टन साधनास विच वी माइट हैव डन इन अवर पास्ट लाइफ ऑल्सो सो वी गेट अट्रैक्टेड टूवर्ड्स दोज टाइप ऑफ साधनास we naturally like them and want to follow that sadhana those sadhanas so whichever uh, is suitable to our personality we should accept so apare so there are others who focus their attention of their sadhana on their intake on their food by controlling and regulating food they can regulate their mind actually our body is made up of food hmm. all that we have eaten right from our childhood has made our body and our mind is also made up of the subtler aspect of food they say and even the pranas are affected by the food so our equipment the body mind intellect is directly controlled and governed by the food which we eat therefore if we can regulate our food we can regulate our body mind uh, in a proper pranas in a proper way so the type of food which we eat uh first of all the quality of food see everything is explained as i said the bhagavad gita i am i must have said in the previous yajna the bhagavad gita is a very good commentary on itself whatever bhagwan mentions in one shloka he explains in some other shloka somewhere else so about the different types of food also bhagwan explains in the 17th chapter satvik rajasik tamasik the food are divided based on the gunas we have this division of vegetarian non vegetarian is not there in our scripture the division is based on the gunas satvik rajasik and tamasik because all food are essentially alive only you don't eat dead material so this um, uh, satvik food they help to keep our body more healthy and it's very conducive to our mind and all rajasik food makes us very agitated and more uh, active and all and tamasik food makes us dull sleepy lazy uh, intoxicated so there is tamasik food so by taking the food ha uh, that is one is quality of food another is the way it is uh, acquired the food whether we have stolen it or whether we have um, bought it with the proper uh, our money and all means it is uh, obtained through righteous means hmm. or unrighteous means that also determine the quality of the food then the way it is prepared who has prepared it 
and the way that food is prepared, whether it is prepared in the hotel, whether it is prepared in your home, whether you have yourself prepared, whether you have the one who has prepared is prepared for the sake of money or for the sake of love, that all determines the quality of the food. Because one is the gross food, but another the attitude of the person who is preparing also enters the food. Hmm. This is very, very subtle. It enters the food. Therefore, when we prepare food for Bhagwan as Naivedya, it has got a different charm and different taste altogether. Hmm. And the food which is prepared for unknown people, like we don't know who will come and who will eat, like in restaurants and all, they have a different charm altogether. Food which is prepared to store with preservatives and all, they have different tendency. Those food enter our body and remain stored in the body also. Because the food is made with that attitude, so food thinks that I have to just sit somewhere and settle down. So it settles down very comfortably in our body. Preserve, preservatives and all. Anyway, so the food, the way it is prepared with the attitude, then the time at which we consume, the quantity uh, which we consume, the attitude with which we consume the food. Before consuming the food, if we offer it to God and then take it as prasad, then it has got a different, uh, uh, different uh, charm altogether, different effect. So this, uh, all these factors determine the food. So there are some seekers who give lot of importance to it and they will uh, go to such an extent that they themselves will uh, cook the food and eat. They will not rely on anyone. Because any other person, their person, samskar will go into the food. Suddenly different type of thoughts will start coming in our head. So it's very interesting. You can try it out for some time. Just eat food which you yourself, raw food, you cook and you eat. It has got a different uh, effect on the mind altogether. So there are seekers who focus lot of attention on this and through regulating their food they regulate their body they regulate their pranas and they regulate their mind make the mind more and more pure therefore in the good old days we have stories of seekers who did tapas for a long time they relied on the natural food available in the in nature, like fruits and uh, roots and all. It is said about Parvati ji who did tapas to attain Lord Shiva. She started uh, eating what you call uh, first fruits and all. Then she gave it up. Then she started eating only leaves, fallen leaves, for sustaining her body. And then she gave up that also. Therefore, her name became Aparna. Parna she is to eat. And then only survived on water. And then she survived only on pure air. And the energy which we gain from the sun directly. So food plays a very, very important part in our sadhana. And many of our sadhanas are uh, said that you do upvas or you, you eat only this type of food, only eat fruits or only drink milk, something like that. So, apare niyata haraha pranan praneshu juvvati. So, by regulating their diet, these seekers, they control the pranas. They control the different aspect of pranas. They as though dedicate or offer different aspect of pranas into pranas. Means they, they purify the pranas at a subtler level by controlling their food. Hmm. So, pranan praneshu juvvati. So, in this way, sarve api ete yadnya vidaha. So, so many sadhanas Bhagwan has mentioned. He says that all of them are great 
no words of yajna no words of this sadhana so all these spiritual practices are mentioned as yajna as worship so they are the great no words of worship and through this sadhana yajna kshapita kalmashaha they have destroyed all their negativities their sins from their mind have gone away by just following this sadhana so karma yog associated with some more spiritual practices karma yog is general for everyone but then we should also have some of these spiritual practices in our life to make our mind more and more pure hmm so in the third chapter bhagwan purely explain karma yog but in this chapter he is telling something more about our sadhana which we can follow so sarve api ete yajna vidaha yajna kshapita kalmashaha further the importance of this sadhana bhagwan tells in the next verse he says <coughs> yajna shishta amrita bhujah yanti brahma sanatanam nayam lokostya yajnasya kutonya kuru sattama yajna shishta amrita bhujah yanti brahma sanatanam नायम लोकोस्तोस्तम भगवान से इज वन हु परफॉर्म दिस वेरियस साधनास विच आर इंडिकेटेड एज यज्ञ एंड देन वन हु पार्टेक्स ऑफ द रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस साधना इन द फॉर्म ऑफ प्योरिटी ऑफ द माइंड एंड क्वाइटिट्यूड ऑफ द माइंड एंड द जॉय of the mind that is called yajna shishth yajna shishth means the remnants of the uh, yajna it means what in puja what we mean by prasad in uh, the language of yajna it means yajna shishth so one who takes yajna shishth alone means one who only performs sadhana in the attitude of yajna and whatever results come he takes it as prasad external result as well as internal result externally also whatever one gains by when one follows the path of karma yoga one has to accept that result as bhagwan's prasad special gift to us that attitude should be there because if we start comparing what we get with others then we might feel Uh, happy unhappy huh? proud jealous angry and all those things will come but we should not compare just whatever i have done i got the result accept it as prasad special gift from god that's very important so that will keep my mind prasanna happy all the time so yajna shishta amruta therefore it the yajna shishta is called amruta here amrut means like nectar it gives great joy it gives great peace and happiness therefore it is called nectar so if we continue to do some sadhana slowly and steadily we will experience that joy which doesn't depend on any outer factors inner joy it's called prasannata that prasannata alone is indicated here as amrut which we had seen in the second chapter also bhagwan talked about this prasad prasad buddhi prasad hmm? with this prasad all the dukha huh? prasad is sarva dukhanam hani rasyo pa jayate with this prasad all our sorrows get negated so when we do this simple sadhanas which are mentioned here and also which are not mentioned here bhagwan will say that there are many many sadhanas whichever are comfortable for us when we do those sadhanas our mind start becoming more